Welcome to Oak Mountain Media. My name is Noah Kenimer, and today I'll be interviewing Ms. Susan Schwartz of Girls Golf. Ms. Schwartz, how are you doing today? Good. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you here. And first, what we would like to go over is we'd like to discuss some of your background, you know, what got mm -hmm. you into golf yeah. and, you know, who was an influence in your life. Well, um, I grew up in a very athletic family. You've heard from being in my AP government class yeah. that all my older brothers and um, were all football players and athletics was just a huge part of our life. And um, I became very interested in tennis, and in my adult life, I, I, I played competitive tennis. And about 16, 17 years ago, I tripped and fell and hurt my back really badly and had to have back surgery, and I couldn't play tennis anymore. Wow. And so my husband said, you know, you should pick up a golf club. And I did, and that was the end of the story. I've been addicted to golf ever since then. Yeah, probably better than me at that. But look, so... <laughs> You know, today, in today's kind of golf, you know, people are starting to shorten events mm -hmm. to where it's nine holes instead of 18, mm -hmm. shorter courses. What, what's your opinion on that? How do you think that should go? Well, I think that um, one of the things that I work with my team on is that you've got to be fit to play 18 holes. Um, you don't play it in a cart. You walk it. And you can um, push your golf cart, uh, excuse me, your golf clubs, or you can carry them. And when we practice, we carry them for fitness. But regardless of whether you're pushing or carrying, You've got to be fit to play 18 holes. And um, so when my girls play tournaments, they play 18 holes. And um, early in the season, we see how tired they are. Um, when we play matches, like when we play Hoover or Vestavia, they're nine holes. Um, I think golf is 18 holes. But I think for the general public, offering nine hole events will bring more people in. And I think any way we can bring more people into golf, the better. I agree with that. So, I mean, and now you have these people now that these different companies that are challenging like PGA, mm -hmm. like now we have Live Golf. Yes. So, I mean, like these traditional PGA that have the, U that they do have the US Open and the Masters mm -hmm. and all this different stuff. What, what do you think about Live Golf? You think it could take off? I, I'm not a fan of Live Golf. Really? Um, I don't really love I think, let me put it this way. I think Roy McIlroy said it best. He said in an interview that um, if you're just playing golf for the money, you're playing golf for the wrong reasons. And I do think that if you look at the people that are in the Live Golf um, rosters um, playing for them now um, on that tour, that, that a lot of them are people who are there first and primor primarily for the money. Um, and I just, I think the spirit of golf, the artistry of golf is as much as the um, prize package. And so, um, so I'm not a big fan. I don't, I don't like the way it came into existence. Could there be a third tour past the British and the, um, the, the PGA? Yeah, I think there is, there's a place for it. I just don't like the way Live Golf went about doing it. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, we've seen money ruin other sports too. I mean, a lot of players, they'll get out there, play whatever, you know, football, and they'll get paid millions of dollars and mm -hmm. just for the money. They want, right. they don't, it's not for the love of the game anymore. So, I mean, with this, I'd like to talk about how the media, like social media, has influenced golf as it's gone from its early days of golf and how it is now. Well, we saw that happening about 10 or so years ago when um, Bubba Wat, uh, Watson and Ricky Fowler and some other um, very popular younger, at the time, golf golfers, PGA golfers, started doing um, YouTube videos where they would lip sync and do silly stuff. And, um, and a lot of their PGA competitors thought, well, I would never do that. Well, everyone is on social media now. I mean, everyone has a social media account. And I think it's just an opportunity for them, A, to get golf out there, B, to get them out there, and C, to draw um, uh, sponsorships. Okay. You know, if you are, if you are um, bringing in hundreds of thousands or millions of followers, then sponsors are going to, you know, lift their head and look at that. Yeah, money talks. Yeah. <laughs> so, and another thing I wanted to bring to attention was um, now that we're having these things about, you know, different ways, concepts of teaching golf, mm -hmm. you know, what is your best fundamental of teaching golf to your girls? The short game is everything. Okay. That uh, putting is the only shot in golf that you get more than one chance at, usually. Um, and if, if you are good around the greens in your short game, it's going to save you every single time, every single time. If your drive is off, if you can get it to the green, 
your short game will save you. So I'm, I am um, a coach who pushes short game, short game, short game. Okay. Yeah, I've played golf before, and I've had all, yeah, the part about putting, I agree with that, but the thing about my short, I've, I've never been good at golf, but the thing about my game, I've always had trouble with the short game, and I think if I could improve that, I could improve my way it, a lot. It would improve everything. And the yeah. beginning of an iron swing is a chip. And so if you've got good contact on the short, as you go into the longer stroke, it's going to be there for you. Okay. So you mentioned putting. I'd like to talk about the new putting green. Yeah. You got put outside How about your that? Range. So <laughs> what kind of details you got Well, for that? last year, Mr. Gunn came to my door and knocked on it and said, can you come outside for a minute? And I said, sure. And I went out in the hall, and there was uh, Tom Dreyer, um, uh, Meredith, uh, excuse me, Dyer, Meredith Dyer's dad. And I'm like, what's going on? And he goes, well, you know, I have a construction business, and I had a client that wanted to build a putting green, and it didn't work out, and I have all this material. How about we build a putting green for the girls? And I'm like, where? And Mr. Gunn went right outside your window, and I wow. went, what? And so it's happened. We have a putting green, and they've been working on it all summer. It's probably going to have five or six holes on it. And uh, for someone who, love, who pushes short game, that's mm -hmm. huge. And um, we're going to, the holes have just come in from the manufacturer, and we're going to put in the holes. I'm going to select where I want them to be in the next week or so, and then you're going to see my girls out there on a regular basis working. Yeah, I've had, I've heard teachers like Miss Lewis, she's talked about how she's going to think about her eighth period students going to be looking out. They're going <laughs> to have to keep the going. blinds closed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're going to talk about more about the players y'all have this year. Y'all, mm -hmm. what kind of, or you have anybody committed to any kind of university? Not right this here? year. We have a really young team this year. Um, last year, um, uh, L. Forbes, uh, this year, as our senior last year, committed and is playing for Swanee this year. And before that, we had Bella Carlisle and Katie Gray playing for Sneed State. And before, and, um, before that, we've, we've had uh, – and now Katie is now signed uh, for her third and fourth years – at Huntington to play, and um, and that's exciting because uh, girls golf is probably the easiest girls golf scholarship to get because there aren't a lot of girls playing golf. And um, this year I've only got one senior. Uh, we'll see what happens. She's new to the game, um, Hannah Easterling, but she's very talented. She's a lefty, like her coach, and um, and it's going to be interesting to see. She sort of peaked, at, started peaking at the end of last year in her first year, and. We'll see what happens this year. She very well may sign somewhere. We don't know yet. Um, and then my juniors are super talented. Uh, Morgan and uh, Madeline and uh, Laura Kelly and Lise um, Mullins, super talented. Uh, what they're going to do in the next two years, I couldn't even begin to tell you. And then Meredith, um, my freshman, is, um, is showing great progress. Our tryouts are in two weeks. I'd like to add a couple more to the team. We'll see. I like a small team because it... It gives players more playing time. I like to keep the number under 10. Um, we're at six now. I'd love it if we could get to at least to anywhere between eight and 10. So we'll see. But um, I think we're going to have a good year. We've had the program now seven years and are finally competitive with the other schools that have had programs for a long time. So I'm real proud of them. Yeah, that's good. So, you know, we got so much, so much talent around here in 7A with Thompson, you know, uh, all these big schools. And mm -hmm. now here at Oak Mountain we have, the, you know, the – we have families here that are just, you know, here to with talent, local talent. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's kind of good to, that, to know that we're going to have young talent that's going to be able to flourish in the girls' golf. Oh, yeah, and I've already years. had parents um, emailing me from the middle school. So I had a sixth-grade parent say, when can, when can my daughter play for the high school? She loves golf. And so by my girls getting out there and, and making a good name for Oak Mountain High School girls' golf, it brings those kids from the middle school and the intermediate school that see them, see them in uniform and see what they've done and see how much fun they're having. And it's a, it's a sport for life. You can play, I mean, there are 90-year-old people out there playing golf just fine. And um, you can't say that about all other sports. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear about that enthusiasm. So I think that's all we got for you today. All right. So thank you for, all right. again for coming in out and talking to us. Yeah, we're looking forward to a good season. Thanks for having me. That's all we got. <laughs>